channel and hello if you're new. My name is Michaela. I'm a 21 year old foster mom making videos about motherhood, foster care, cooking, cleaning, lifestyle hauls, all that good stuff. Um, today's video is, I don't want it to come off as like complaining or gripey, but I just want to explain. So, especially since getting our newest placement of our newborn little girl, we get this question all the time, which we've gotten them since we've had our, our boys, but anyway, the question is, are we adopting? And this may seem like a yes or no question to whoever is asking it, whoever's not involved in foster care, but the answer is not black and white, not at all. It doesn't work that way. Like, I wish I could explain how the whole process works, so I'm going to kind of do that today, just barely touch base. But in foster care, every child has a goal. And the goal always, first off, is reunification. And reunification means it's either going back to bio mom or bio dad or bio grandmother, whoever, um, or being reunified with their family. That is always the first goal. Now, it is a long long process long process and every new kid someone actually someone asked me like if because we have the newborn does that mean we're adopting it doesn't work that way it doesn't work that way it actually like starts over for her pretty much so um she gets her own timeline um so the court systems give the bio family so basically so long to get their act together and to complete their case plan and do whatever they need to do yada 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 because they have a long list of things that they have to do in order to get them back us foster parents don't know what that is unless the bio parent tells us because in that part of the meeting they excuse us so because it's not our business we have no right to know what they have to do to get their get their children back all we have a right to know is where do we take the kids and when and what do we need to be doing with them that's it like I've said this before and this may seem harsh and I hope this doesn't discourage you from foster care but as foster parents you basically have no rights to these children at all we have no rights to them like I can even get their hair cut without a, without a signature from bio family can't do it so um yeah I've said it before but we're basically babysitters babysitters for the state's kids the state's kids. The state takes custody from whoever is struggling at the moment and they have custody. The state has custody. We do not have custody of them. They live with us. We do not have custody. It's so there's there's that. So like when we take them to the doctor, we don't sign like we are we don't sign for that really. Like we sign for DCBS like the foster care system basically. So yeah, we cannot get permission to treat. Um, we have, there. there's a specific paper that we have to give them that is signed by their social worker that gives them permission to treat. Not our signature, not our say-so. They will take it for in case of emergency, but. So, hopefully that gives you a better idea of, like, what, what it is. Like, we are just there to provide for the needs of the children and to, like, better their lives while they're in the process, while their bio family is in the process of, you know, working their case plan or not whichever depending is your your case so i said it before we do not have court until june um um that is a lot of people have court monthly and i, I don't know if i've said this before but my current placements were with someone else for f the first four months they were in care so in a few days they'll have been in care eight months and they've been with us for f five almost five of those so they were with someone else before so their timeline starts when the day they come into care and we have this thing at least in our state where they have they they start looking at permanency at 12 months so say your bio family is not working their plan at 12 months at that court date the judge or dcbs has the right to say okay we want to switch their goal to adoption it's either reunification or it's adoption mm -hmm. And once the adopt the goal is switched to adoption, that is when they go through the process of um, terminating parental rights. Now, 
I'm going to have a separate video all about visits because that's been a huge, like, it's a huge part of foster care. At least it is for us in this particular case. Um, so I, I want to talk about that in more detail. But just to give you a kind of idea of how much rights the parents still have, they get visits all the way up until their rights are terminated. They, just because the goal changes from, to, from reunification to adoption, they still keep visits. They still can get their children back. It's not a yes or no thing until that judge says your their rights are terminated. They're not out of the picture until that point. And then, then after the par parental rights are terminated, then they look at other potential, well, I don't want to say they look at other potential family because they technically should already do that. But in a lot of cases, some people don't come out of the woodworks until um, they're like basically looking for adoption. So they, that's when they kind of start looking into that, I guess. At least that's from what I've heard. Like a lot of people come out of the woodworks about that time. So it's still not like certain. And someone told me in training, do not even think, so count on it on adoption until that, you know, you have that signed. You know, until you have that paper signed and in your hand, they're not adopted. So, and also to make this clear, we signed a contract to say that we support reunification, and we do. We do support reunification, and um, so when I'm talking about this, like, I'm talking from someone who, who hopes to adopt in the future, but, you know, it's all dependent upon the case. Some cases are bound to end up in adoption either by bio family's decision or just choices um i mean because some some bio families just will just sign them away i mean that's up to them but and then others you know they work through their case and they they really turn their life around and they're able to get them back so um that's that's great and we we signed up to support that and that's what we that's what we're doing um so like just so that people know for our situation, I'm not going to get into super detail about our case because, one, we're not allowed to. It's no one else's business what's going on in our case. If you are, like, a close family, then you know, you know, what you need to know to help us care for our children. That's it. Like, our foster children. That's it. And no one knows. I, we still don't know everything about the case. Like, there's a lot we don't know. Like I said, we don't have any rights to anything. I mean, I would like to know more just because it would help me get more background about the children and their history and, like, things that they may experience in the future, yada, yada. Like, there's a lot I wish I knew just as a foster parent um, in that point of view. But, um, so, our goal is reunification. Um... So, and then in June, we go back to court, and the judge at that point will decide there is three choices that the judge could make at that point. And he will base, he or she, I'm sorry, will base that decision off of what DCBS, the social workers, suggest probably. And one of them, they'll end up making their own decision, but the social workers will make a suggestion. Because they're the ones who've worked on the case, who are living it day in and day out. They know, you know they know the most about the case. I mean, the judge will read it, obviously, and he and he or she gets the final say, but, you know, they take into consideration a lot of what they say, and it's, <clears throat> you know, they'll look at what they say, how the kids are, how the bio family is, what they've done in their case plan, all of that. So, um, in June, our judge could order reunification, and at that point, they, um, I would think that there would be a time, like, of getting them, the children prepared for that, like, like, working them up to it, like, um, they'll get to overnight visits and, like, weekend visits and then, like, longer and longer visits and there'll be a transition period is what I'm saying, that's the word I was looking for, but sometimes there's not. Hopefully that would be the case because I think every case should have that, especially if they've been in care, like, ours have been in care almost eight months, at that point they'll be in care 12 months. You know, either way, they need that transition time, in my opinion. But my opinion doesn't matter always. So, <laughs> but, so they could order reunification. They could order 
egg will change to adoption. And at that point, um, the social workers would start um, working towards termination of parental rights. Just to give you a timeline, that is not a quick process. So six months maybe at the least is what I've heard up to like a year and then say say the judge does um, grant a uh, termination of parental rights they have so long that they can appeal that not to say that it will be approved but they have that option they have the option to pursue that the bio family does so there's that and then um, the other option which is that they can provide bio family more time um, there is somewhat of a constraint, a uh, constraint, is that even a word? I don't know. I don't know if that's a word, but there, um, I think it was Clinton that put this in, Clinton or Kennedy, that's a big difference in presidents, put in this thing, it's like, where have the children been 15 months out of 22? So out of 22 months, there's, so 22 months, 15 of them, where have they been? Have they been with bio family? Have they been with foster families? If they've been with foster families for 15 months out of 22, like that's your time limit. Like if you haven't got it together by then at, at that 15 month mark, you, they, it's the case needs to move along to, towards adoption. And the reason that they did that is that so kids are not so stuck in the system forever. Like judges that just keep giving time and time and time and time and time. They the whole goal is to get these kids to permanency, wherever that may be. So, um, obviously, they give the bio family as much services and help as they can, but they can only give them so much time because the child's best interest comes comes into play. And it's like, okay, been in foster care almost two years at this point. They need to have permanency. They need to know where they're going to be forever. They need to be with our forever family, whether that's going back to the fam the bio family or if that's being adopted by somebody. They need to have that permanency by then. There's a lot of talk right now. I'm in a lot of foster parent support groups about shortening that time. That two years is too long. Um, for two years is too long. And some some cases still go do go past that that two year mark. It's it's more rare now. But it, it does happen. Um, so, like, <laughs> when you say, when you ask us that, one, you don't know what you're asking. Because to give you any type of detail, I would have to get into the details of their case. And I can't. So, I can't really answer that right now. Like, I can't. I won't be able to answer that until they're adopted. And I still, I, I still, I still need to protect that family's privacy. If they are adopted, I still have to, I still need to protect that family's privacy. And that's, that's the children's privacy too. So that's something that, you know, you have to think about when you ask that. And I know everybody's curious and I follow foster, foster parents here on YouTube as well. And I'm, I'm so curious. Like, I just want to know, are you going to get to adopt them? Or, you know, are they leaving? Like what? Like, what's going on? Like, it's it's interesting. I understand that. And um, I was following my foster mom before we got our first placement. And she was just more discreet than others about, like, she wouldn't even tell their genders. And, and like, she, she had had a child for a long time. But she would not talk about where they were in their case plan. And, um, which I respect now. But then I was like, yeah, that kind of sucks because I want to know. Like, I want to know what's going on. But it's so much bigger than you can understand. So, and um, these are our first placements. Um, and just just be gentle about it because this is just such a hard process for everyone involved. Um, asking those type of types of questions can open up a lot of like anxiety and fear and doubt and stress um, because you just don't know especially with our case nothing is happening in our case until June unless something major happens before then so June June is our year mark so that nothing is happening until then so I we're living day-to-day -day life right now nothing is changing in our case plan until then um and 
end in June. We have no idea what will happen. Um, so that is completely up to, to the judge. And we'll obviously support um, whatever decision is made. Um, <clears throat> we do love these placements so, so much. And, I mean, I have had people ask me, like, if the case does go to adoption, would you be willing to adopt them? Yes, we would. We are a foster to adopt home, and we are open to adopting them if the case goes that way. Um, like I said, <laughs> I don't know what that noise was. See my German Shepherd? She's showing up my blanket. Riley! Riley! No, 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 no! What'd you do? Come on, what'd you do? Shut up, and blanket. Shut up, Mine's yes, blue. yours. Like the purple one? The gray one that you're using right now. Um, Riley, that's a no no. <sighs> Riley, down. That's a no no. Come here. Tell him. Tell him what you did. <gasps> Tell him what you did. Did you chew Daddy's blanket? Um, you chew a hole in Daddy's blanket. Um, that's not a good girl. That's not a good girl. What? Huh? Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Temporary moment of craziness to it. Yeah. Yeah. He's about to go sleep back here. Anyway, I'm gonna stop rambling so much. That just reminded me like hurry up, Michaela, stop talking. But it's just such I'm rolling lotion. I do that. I can't help it. snoring he's got to start snoring he literally falls asleep in like half a second half a second so at this point in the video if you if, you, if my husband's snoring bothers you you want to click off <laughs> anyway so yes in our case June is is our month of um our court month. I, I won't even be at court before then unless something major happens. Um, there was court for the baby after she was born, but um, um, I didn't go. And that's, that's a long story <laughs> that I can't get into. Um, but it's just, that was, that was a very emotional court, court hearing probably. So they just suggested that um, I not be a part of that one because it just may not make things any easier. Um, um, yeah, but June may be an emotional court hearing. I don't know. It just depends. I mean, anything court related will probably be emotional for me because I've never really, I mean, I'm, a, I'm like pre-law, but I am been in the courtroom to observe, but it's different when like our whole lives could change with one 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 word one sentence like it's, it's crazy um I try not to think about that just because it gives me super anxiety like I uh, I don't like to not be able to plan like I just for instance like I think the baby girl will be like six months old then five or six months old um so I haven't bought her any six to nine month clothes because I don't know what's going to be happening at that court date. So like, I don't want to buy a crap ton of six to nine, nine to 12 month clothes. And then she'd be reunified. Um, because I mean, I mean, if time grows closer, but you know, you do get paid as a foster parent, which is also a separate video. But, I mean, it just co barely covers the essentials of his children. So, we, I mean, we put a lot of our own money into buying for the kids. So, when I'm saying that, that's what I'm talking about. Like, we put a lot of our own money in into buying stuff for them. So, that's what I'm talking about for that. 
Um, so, as, as I've said before, the only thing certain about foster care is uncertainty. Um, it's the only thing you can plan for is uncertainty. And, I don't know, it's, it's a hard process. It's hard for someone like me who has, like, I'm very OCD. I'm very, ugh, like, I'm, I'm, I struggle from anxiety and I like to plan ahead. Like, I like to know what's going on. And it's like, everything after June is like black for me. It's like, ugh. and I hate that. I don't, I just don't like not knowing what's going on. It drives me crazy. Like, sometimes my husband, like, somebody will call him. Like, who was it? Just being, like, nosy. Like, who was it? And he just won't tell me just because he knows it'll drive me crazy. Like, it was probably, like, his dad or a warranty company. I don't know. But it drives me crazy. Like, I hate not knowing stuff. So, anyway. Yes. So, are we adopting? Not right now. Not right now. Um... So, I don't know. I don't know if the case will go there. I don't know if this case will go there. Maybe another case will. Maybe this case will. I don't know. I don't know. That's just my answer. I don't know. So, and even, like I said, this is a super long process. So, like, I don't know. I just don't think people get it. Like, this is a long process. Like, this is, this is going to be well. Okay, let's just say, for example... If this case was to go to adoption, it would definitely be mid to late 2020 before that could be finalized. Mid to late 2020. Possibly even to 2021. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, guys. Like, that's just how long this process takes. Adopting through foster care takes forever. And just to put this out there. Because I don't want anyone to think that we're not supportive of reunification. We are. But we're not going to lie about we are a foster to adopt home. There are plenty of just plain foster homes who have no no desire to adopt. They just want to help kids in the moment. We just we want to be open to that if the case goes there. There's also adopt only, which we are not. Um, adopt only people will only get children that who have had their rights terminated at that point. The parents have had their rights terminated. So they're like open to be adopted. So that's what you would be getting as at that point. So being a foster to adopt versus adopt only, it opens you up to a lot of uncertainty, but, but one, there's a lot more kids that you can help. Like not that many, like there are a lot of adopt only cases, but for us, me being 21, my husband just turned 25, we we are not at the place where we can take a 13-year-old. It's just not feasible. So, we have an age range of 0 to 3. There's not a whole lot of that that's going into adopt only. So, we got into foster care for so many reasons. We, we want to adopt at some point in the future. We're really not in a super huge hurry. Um, if, if the right... One, some child somewhere during our foster care journey will need to be adopted. We know that. We don't know if it's this case. We don't know if it's five years from now. We have no idea. But in the meantime, we get to help these kids. We get to help these families. We get to make a lasting impact on all of their lives. So that's a great opportunity. So we could have chosen the adopt only route, but we didn't because we are, we're pulling ourselves out of our comfort zone we are taking a risk. We're getting attached. You know. And that, this is not me saying if they were reunified, I would not be heartbroken. I would so be heartbroken because I love these kids so much. Not heartbroken because I don't want them to be reunified. Heartbroken just because I will miss them. I will miss them so much. Um, I just, I love them. I love having them here. So, I mean, when people say, I could never do what you, you're doing, I'd get too attached that are you saying that we don't get attached because we are so attached we love these kids we love them with everything in our body everything so and if they were to leave we would be heartbroken 
but if they if they leave we know that in the time that they've been with us that they have been well taken care of well loved you know they've got to experience all kinds of new things they've got to grow um we always said we no matter if they were reunified like if they were if they're reunified you know we know that we have given them the best ever of everything like while they were here and we we just wanted to give them back better than they came to us like stronger healthier like our three-year-old like started school and like has learned counting and is learning his abcs and like that's stuff that he didn't know when he came here so that's you know that's huge i mean that's just it's exciting and and they have this big huge family that loves them in the meantime because i'm not saying that there's not bad foster foster homes that around there has to be i know there is so in the meantime they're here with us and we're taking the best possible care of them that we can and we're, we're doing everything to make their life so normal and happy and letting them be kids as long as they're here so yes that is my long rambling video about are we adopting it's the question that we get all the time all the time and if you've asked me this question if you you know you know me personally I'm not mad at you I'm not mad at you for asking that question I just wanted to put this out here because it's so hard to explain in a two sentence response it's, it's just too hard so when you ask me that I'm not trying to be like I'm not telling them anything like I'm, I don't want to be rude like I just want you to understand like there's one there's certain things that we can and can't talk about and it's just it's so complicated it's so complex um and yeah so that's all for this video um I hope you guys enjoyed it if you did leave it a thumbs up comment down below let me know if, you, if you're another foster parent if you if you get if you guys get this question how do you deal with it like what do you say to people how do you cope with that because we get it all the time and you know it does like start to get like <sighs> don't ask me um so what's your response how do you deal with it um and also of course if you're not subscribed definitely subscribe lots of crazy stuff going around in our lives i'm a pre-law student um, we've got three placements, three-year-old, almost two-year-old, and a newborn baby girl. Um, I'm married. I've got three demon dogs. Back through my husband. Um, yeah. And I'm still going through the decluttering process of our house. House tour is still coming. If I ever get my life together, stay tuned. Maybe we'll see but there's always interesting stuff um i'm always a mess so if you don't like real real moms real real life stuff then you probably won't watch this channel but you probably didn't make it this far in the video either so those of you who did thanks congratulations and i'll see you in my next one bye